What is going on everyone, it's Mr. Uzi here, and today we're going to be investigating how much wattage a typical system will actually draw from the wall. When it comes to building a new computer, you've always been told to never skimp on your power supply. Now that means you're finding one within your budget that's reputable, that probably is 80 plus bronze or higher, and is going to be enough wattage for your system. But that last one is often where I feel a lot of people get a little confused. Now you can use a whole bunch of estimators and calculators to tell you how much wattage my system could use, but it's really hard to find that information to be extremely accurate, especially when you're about to make a very expensive purchase. So today we are going to be looking at just that to see how much a typical system will be pulling from the wall. Now behind me is a system with a Ryzen 2200G, RX 584 gig, eight gigabytes of memory, uh, the motherboard, uh, more or less doesn't matter, hard drives and things like that. It has an SSD, it has a hard drive. Um, it also has a 500 watt, 80 plus bronze power supply. Now, we have a watt meter hooked up to the other end of the power supply to go ahead and measure how much power is being consumed when this computer is overclocked in a synthetic load as well as gaming loads. And the results were, let's just say they're pretty shocking for me. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at those. So for the synthetic testing, I went ahead and put a major stress on the CPU and the GPU running both Prime95 and Firmark simultaneously, maxing out the usage for both of those components. Those are going to be drawing the most power, so those are the ones that we're really going to be caring about in this sense. Uh, with the CPU at 3.85 GHz, about 1.33 volts, and the GPU had a 25% power limit increase uh, with a slight overclock on it, uh, we got about 330 watts from the wall, which is not as much as I had expected initially. Uh, I'm not actually sure how much I expected initially, but it was, it was a lot more than that. Uh, but keep in mind, stress testing is going to put far more load than you're ever going to see in any normal workload. So we loaded up a game. We loaded up Apex Legends, full game, uh, maxed out at 1080p. Um, uh, we had a 60 hertz monitor, but we went ahead and uncapped the frame rate, so there was no V-Sync involved here. Now with Apex Legends loaded up, we were playing the game and we were running at about 230 watts. Keep in mind, we're on a 500 watt power supply, 80 plus bronze. Now 80 plus bronze means that at 50% load, this power supply will be roughly 85% efficient, meaning that 85% of the power gets converted into using the system versus the 15% that will essentially be lost as heat. Now this number, this 85% number will go down whether you go above that or below it. So 50% is kind of like the sweet spot in terms of efficiency. It's really only the matter of a few percentage points, so it's not a humongous deal, but that's essentially what the whole 80, pro, 80 plus bronze or 80 plus silver gold certification actually means. So. Even with this system overclocked, we are running at about 330 watts, completely under probably the most significant load it's ever going to see. That's pretty good. On a 500 watt power supply, we're successfully able to run our system and we have about 170 watts of headroom. Now, one question that a lot of people might have is, well, what if I wanna upgrade my hardware in the future? What if I want a faster GPU? What if I want a, a more powerful CPU? Well. Here's something else that I did. I went ahead and I ran those same tests on my gaming rig with a Ryzen 1600 overclocked with a uh, GTX 1070 also overclocked. And we got about the same numbers at about 245, 250 watts uh, in the gaming load and about 330 watts in the synthetic load. So you're really not consuming that much more power unless your components are you know, HEDT parts, Threadripper, 9900Ks, 799, you know, you know what I mean. Those components are going to consume far more power than any 500 watt power supply is going to be able to provide. The CPUs alone on some of those parts or computers will be drawing close to three or 400 watts anyway once overclocked. So that's probably not something you have to worry too much about. But you do have some upgrade room, as we've shown with having a more powerful, significantly more powerful computer, consuming maybe just 15 or 20 more watts. So what have we learned from this whole experiment, so to say? Uh, when you're looking for a power supply, uh, less is more, kind of. You wanna make sure that you're getting enough to run your system and then some, so you're not pushing up against that 100% load limit, but you also wanna make sure you're not going vastly overkill, because oftentimes, it's completely unnecessary. 
There is something to be said about getting an overkill power supply in terms of silence. A lot of power supplies won't have their fan spin up because it's not significant load, so you'll have quieter operation. But other than that, it's really more just for show. Some of the more expensive power supplies simply just look nicer in most cases. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button. If you disliked it, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why in the comments below. If you have an overkill power supply in your system, be sure to leave a comment down below. If you're looking to buy a new power supply for a new system you're building in the near future, go ahead and let me know what you think that your power consumption will be for the parts that you have listed. Feel free to drop a PC part picker link down there if you'd like as well. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.